21 years ago, Britain returned Hong Kong to Chinese rule on the basis of an agreement that would guarantee its rights and freedoms for at least 50 years. Now, pro-democracy campaigners charge that China hasn't lived up to its commitments. My guest this week here in Hong Kong is Horace Chung, vice president of the largest pro-Beijing party and a member of the city government's executive council. Will he stand up for the rights of people here or allow China to curtail them? Horace Chung, welcome to Conflict Zone. Yeah, thank you. Last year, the Beijing government made it crystal clear that it no longer feels bound by the joint declaration it signed with Britain mm. in 1984. Why didn't you stand up for the rights of the people of Hong Kong when they said that? Um, I think that the official position is that uh, after signing the joint declaration, uh, Hong Kong has been returned to, to China. And then the Hong Kong affairs will become the internal affairs uh, of our home country. Yeah, but there's a binding international agreement which China signed. Mm -hmm. And these rights and mm. freedoms are supposed to be respected for 50, at least 50 years. Yes, yeah, sure. That was written down. This is mm. a, uh, yeah. uh, an accord which was registered with the United Nations. It's yeah. So why, t why tear it up and why allow it to be torn up? No, actually, all such kind of rights has uh, have been protected in Hong Kong. Uh, as you can see, everyone in Hong Kong now enjoy the freedom of of speech, but certainly much less than they used to. Yeah. But we'll get onto mm. that. Much less. No, uh, I think there will there would be some misunderstanding in the international community. Actually, everyone in Hong Kong, you so can in say anything community. in Hong you Kong. You talk to journalists here. Yeah. You talk to the Journalists Association mm. of Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and presumably you read their reports. So you see how much concern they have about free speech in this in this city. Yeah, uh, I think uh, as a as a person living in Hong Kong, I have the right to say that I enjoy all freedom, all rights of freedom to to speech in Hong Kong, and certainly. Uh, under the legal system, everyone, when you enjoy the uh, freedom of speech, you must have some limitation. For example, you cannot make uh, defamatory statements against anyone else. That is the North in Hong Kong. I, 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 I want to, come, I want to come back and talk about free speech in more yeah. detail. But let's mm. look back at what Liu Kang, mm. the spokesman of the Chinese Foreign Ministry, said last mm. year. He said the Sino-British Joint Declaration mm. no longer had any practical significance and was not at all binding for the central government's management over Hong Kong. Mm. That was an outrageous statement mm about a binding international agreement, wasn't it? But you stayed silent about this. Uh, I you think that care. statement relates to uh, what happened after 1997, as I said before. Yes, and that was, so that after was what the agreement was yeah. directed at, what yeah. happens after 1997. After 1997, certainly the, our home country, they still uh, respect the basic a basic law in Hong Kong, and actually... Uh, but they're saying here they don't. Mm, they're saying that it mm, no longer has any practical significance. No, you, you must uh, uh, to look at it quite fairly. You, you will look that actually the uh, home, uh, our home country, the China, actually they respect the basic law. And uh, uh, now... They say it, they yeah. do. They yeah. say they do, but it's just a slogan. No, them, no, no, no. Because as a lawyer in Hong Kong, I can say that in Hong Kong now, uh, we, we, all of us uh, respect the basic law, we obey the basic law, and we hope that we can still work under the, uh, the legal system, existing legal system and so that we can enjoy the one country, two systems. That is quite important to well, Hong it's, Kong. Well, it, it's mm. becoming a slogan, isn't it? One country, no. two systems. It's, it's more and more one country, one system. And I want to draw your attention to what a senior mm. Chinese official, mm. Li Fei, said in November. Mm. Hong Kong is obliged to respect the constitution mm. of the People's Republic of China, uphold the constitutional order and safeguard national unity. In other words, forget mm. about your basic law. This is no. the document that is much more important now. 
as a part and partial of, uh, of China, certainly Hong Kong, we must respect the constitution of uh, the PRC. Uh, just like Germany, everyone in Germany, you must respect your constitution. It's the same, in, same case in Hong Kong. But, and You've certainly, got a constitution of basic law and in mm, places they're at odds with each other. Uh, you, you must know the, uh, the, uh, the unique legal system in Hong Kong. Actually, basic law is one is a law that is passed by uh, the uh, National P the People's Congress of China. So actually, the basic law is under the Constitution law of the PRC. And, and interpreted mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. the People's Republic that of China is, as that well. That is the existing legal system in PRC. I want to it look remains at, unchanged. I want mm -hmm. to look at the public intimidation of a mm -hmm. law professor that occurred earlier this year. Mm -hmm. In April, Professor Benny Tai, mm -hmm. an expert in constitutional law, became the object of a massive denunciation mm -hmm. campaign by Chinese and Hong Kong officials. After he gave a lecture, he was talking about independence for Hong Kong. And he was variously described mm. as a threat to China's national security, who must be crushed, said mm. one commentary, mm. with a sledgehammer. Do you mm. want to see Benny Tai crushed with a sledgehammer? Is that what you want? I, I can say, uh, uh, Professor Benny Tai, uh, certainly he enjoyed uh, his rights of speech in Hong Kong, but he must obey the law in Hong Kong. Uh, he should not promote anything about independence in Hong Kong that is contrary to the laws of Hong Kong, is contrary Advocating to the Advocating independence of is not against the law. Mm. Advocating independence is not against the law. He's a mm. constitutional law expert. He should know. Uh, he is a legal scholar, but it doesn't mean that his opinion must be right. You didn't answer the question yeah. when I asked you whether he should be smashed with a that, sledgehammer. I would say that if you uh, promulgate any independence in Hong Kong that is contrary to the laws of Hong Kong, it's also contrary to the interests of Hong Kong people. If it was mm. against the law, he would have been arrested mm. and arraigned in court. Mm. You know that. He mm. wasn't. Instead, they chose to denounce but, him yeah. because it and wasn't now, against yeah. the law. And, and actually now you refuse to answer my question about whether he should be smashed smashed with a sledgehammer. Yeah, I'm asking you, the, yes or no? Yeah, that is the loophole in Hong Kong about the Article 23 under the basic law. I want to come because, back to that question. Should he be yeah, smashed with a sledgehammer inter, or it's not? It's interrelated to Article Should 23 Should he be in smashed with a sledgehammer, as mm. recommended by the People's Daily, the mouthpiece mm. of mm. the Communist Party mm. in, in mm. China? Should he be smashed with a sledgehammer? Uh, I would say that he, sh he must obey and respect You're not going to answer this Hong question, Kong. are you? Mm -hmm. Why? Are you afraid of, of uh, upsetting no. China? No. You can't give me a straight answer mm. to a straight question, can mm. you? Uh, about? About whether he should be smashed with a sledgehammer, as mm. recommended by the People's Daily in Beijing. I, I think he, he, must be he should be criticized by Hong Kong people. Is the Chinese state mm. so weak and fragile that a constitutional law expert who talks about independence is a threat to a country of 1.4 billion people? Come on. Really? A threat? Are they so fragile, so insecure in Beijing these days? No. Uh, look, I, I think as a legal professor, he must fully understand that we should not promote independence in Hong Kong. It's not allowed under the norms. Who says? Yeah. Who says you shouldn't? It's under, it's under the... Uh, Who says you shouldn't? No. no. China. Under the basic law, you say that we, we are a part of impartial of the of the People's Republic of China. Under the basic law, it also changed. says he has free speech and, fr and yeah, freedom that, of association. And freedom of speech has a limitation. That is decided must, by China. You must obey in compliance with the basic law and respect one country, two system. And you should not seek any movement for independence in Hong what Kong. What makes mm. you so afraid mm. of it? Is it because China is breathing down your neck It's not over a this? matter of what you say. Almost nobody to... supports mm. independence mm. in Hong Kong. You know this mm. as well as I do. We have a 1.4 1. Mm. billion nation next it's door, not China, and, the and they're of afraid of a few yeah. people in no, Hong Kong. It's about white and Who talk wrong. about independence? You, you should not do something unlawful, and you should not do something wrong. It's not about how many people support your idea. It isn't. I'm, I'm mm. really surprised about this because, mm. you know, you and your party are mm. simply not prepared mm. to fight 
for what's been agreed in the basic law. You about just, what? About freedom of speech. We're, we're talking about many times freedom of speech. We, we, we you we just want to keep. No. You just want to keep the no. central government no. in Beijing happy. No. This is your aim, isn't no. it? With, and hold the door with open. With all respect, for I cannot agree with, your, with what you say. We support uh, the freedom of speech in Hong Kong. But as I said, every right has a limitation when you enjoy your right to freedom. OK, let's look you, at some other you, limitations. You, you must do something within the legal framework. That let's is look at some important. other limitations, mm. Mr. Mm. Chung, being mm. excluded from public office because of your political views. Mm. In 2016, six pro-democracy candidates were disqualified from the election because they backed independence. In March this year, several mm. activists, including the student leader Agnes Chow, mm. were disqualified from running an election because her views weren't to the liking of China. Mm. That wasn't, that's a violation of Article 26 of the basic law, isn't it? Permanent residents of Hong Kong shall have the right to vote and to stand for election in accordance with the law. For uh, the eligibility of every candidate running election in Hong Kong, actually, we have our own legislation. And uh, under the legal provision, uh, you must uh, miss all these criteria, otherwise you will be disqualified. That Article 26 doesn't Kong. say anything and, about and your political views. If, and if anyone they disagree with the wills of the administration. We have the legal channel, and you can go to the court to fight for your, your rights in Hong Kong. You, you, you should know that we still have the ju judicial independence in Hong Kong. You shouldn't we, have to fight for this right, Mr. Chung, if because it's disagree. enshrined in the basic if, law, no, Article 26. Yeah. If the administration exercises its rights under the laws, certainly you may not agree with that. If that's the case, then you should go to the court to fight for your legal interest. That is our legal system. And uh, I can say it's all along maintained by the Hong Kong people, and it's quite important. And uh, as you know, that uh, there's, there are a few candidates that now take their case to the court and challenge the uh, decision of the administration. If they are right, then the court will give them a fair outcome and a fair decision. Why mm. does China get increasingly paranoid about Hong Kong. We had earlier this year Wang Jimin, head of the mm. Chinese government's office in Hong Kong, warning that Hong Kong had become a prominent risk to the country's overall security. Little Hong Kong mm. is a prominent risk to big China's security. That's a serious charge. It is also bordering on paranoia, as I said. In the context of national security, uh, you should you should know that actually there's actually a loophole in Hong Kong because we, uh, we have the obligation to make our own Article 23 for the national security laws in Hong Kong after 1997. But uh, now it's more than 20 years. Hong Kong, we still have not yet carried out our obligation to have our own national security laws. I think that is a loophole, and you can see from Macau. But to call actually, you a prominent a risk, their, their national security pro legal provision about that. To call mm. you a prominent mm. risk, aren't you scared mm. for your job? Mm. And you can, aren't you scared yeah. for your job? You present, mm. you present a prominent risk. To China, Why? Because to the Beijing you can see government. that they that, said so. That, yeah, they and you can so. see that the, the, now there are people in Hong Kong. They they can uh, uh, promulgate the independence movement in Hong Kong, and we cannot have our, our national security legislation to, to to regulate such kind of activities. And I I don't think that is a uh, what we want to exist in Hong Kong. What you have in Hong Kong. Mm is increasing influence from China who do things like kidnapping booksellers, which they did in 2015. You happy no. about that as well? No. Booksellers that disappear across into mainland China and then denounce their activities and say they promise not to uh, publish fabrications uh, any we, longer. Yeah, we, uh, you think that's a legal thing that China did? We about that case in Hong Kong. And as you, you didn't know, do that anything the Hong Kong it, government you? has uh, made every uh, investigation about that. And certainly and we no are quite results. concerned. You, you yeah. may have investigated, but you yeah. didn't come up with any results. We are still you? waiting for the, uh, the uh, formal results of the administration in Hong Kong. How long are you going to wait? 
You know mm. what happened. China kidnapped them and forced no, one of them, I at least, into a denunciation of his previous activities. Uh, or confirmed. Otherwise, you, I don't think we can have a fair comment about such case in Hong Kong. What do you think happened? Mm. I mean, they go missing for months. And then they come back and they are there for a day and they say, OK, it's all right. And then they disappear over into the mainland again. And you think this isn't China kidnapping them? Is this the kind of future you we, want we, for the people of unless, Hong Kong? Unless we, we, where we they get know enforced the, disappearances? We, we, we know what happened in the case. Otherwise, I don't think we can have a fair comment about that. You seem determined to mm. spend a lot of time and effort over Andy Chan and his national party. Yeah, there was a government outcry over a speech he gave um, at a, what was it, the Hong Kong Foreign mm. Correspondents Club just, just a few days mm. ago. A government spokesman said it was totally unacceptable, again, for someone to advocate independence. I ask you again, if he broke the law, why not arrest him? But you don't. You seek to intimidate him instead. Mm. Um, first, uh, uh, as an uh, executive council member, uh, I'm not in a, I don't think I'm now in a good position to comment on uh, every particular case in Hong Kong because such kind of ca case, uh, that appeal may go to the executive council. So I will not comment on uh, a particular case in Hong Kong. But I would say that no one should do something harmful uh, to the Hong Kong people. That is quite important. They're and talking so, yeah. about it being a threat to mm. national security. Where exactly is the specific threat to national security in a speech that mm. Andy Chan gave to the Foreign Correspondents Club a uh, few days ago? I would say that. Uh, how is that a how is that a threat to national security? When you when someone I will not comment comment on this particular case, but if anyone they are. Uh, uh, encourage other people to, to seek independence. I don't think it's good to Hong Kong. Mm. You use these vague mm. accusations mm. of uh, violating or harming national security to intimidate people who hold different views. This is the aim. This is what you're doing, no. isn't it? No. Under international law, as Amnesty International pointed out, under international law, the burden of proof is on the government to demonstrate that a real, not just a hypothetical danger, exists to national security. You haven't done that with the yeah. National Party, and yet your government you is planning to ban You need to, to wait it. and see how the court decided. I think that the court will give you a fair decision after that. Certainly, people may have different wills. Now, you may say that you may support uh, uh, some people in Hong Kong, but other people, they may not agree with that. Uh, so. The final outcome depends on how the court interpret the laws. On the, on the National Party, you, you put a lot of energy mm. into curtailing the rights or mm. trying to curtail the rights of people who speak about independence. But you have absolutely nothing to mm. say about the repeated and colossal violations of human rights that take place on the mainland. Why is this? Are you simply just concerned with political expedience, not principles? not principles like rights and freedom. You don't care about that. Certainly you not. You care about curtailing yeah. the rights of somebody who wants to talk about independence. Certainly not. It's hypocrisy, yeah. isn't it, in Hong Boris Chung? We, we respect everyone's rights in Hong Kong. We, certainly, we want to protect all our rights under the basic law. And uh, we, we hope that uh, Hong Kong and, and then China and the central government, all of us, will respect and keep the basic, uh, uh, all our rights. But the Beijing government clearly doesn't, law. does it? The Beijing government no. doesn't, ex doesn't respect those rights. No, if that's the case, Hong Kong cannot work after 1997. And actually, you can see after 1997, uh, Hong Kong remains the unchanged, remains the same, and Hong Kong still keep. Uh, the, the market quite well after 1997. Chung, it's not in, in, an easy it, task. In them. March this mm. year, mm. the most senior human rights officer of the United Nations um, said his office was monitoring reports in China of arbitrary detentions, enforced disappearances, ill treatment and discrimination directed at human rights defenders, lawyers, legislators, booksellers and members of communities such as Tibetans 
and Uyghurs. This is the reality as seen by the United Nations about human rights respect in China today. And you are silent about that. You're not silent about somebody who makes a speech talking about independence here, but you're silent about these massive violations of human rights. That's hypocrisy, isn't it? No, certainly I, I, I will say that uh, I'm a I'm someone living in Hong Kong and someone living in PRC. I know what happened in here. And we know that our human rights situation has been improved day, day by day. And we certainly hope that we will clarify uh, all the misunderstanding in the international community. And Is this in, misunderstanding? What's the misunderstanding? It's a violations of human rights we're talking about. We're talking about I misunderstanding. Think every country has its own problem. When you are talking about rights, we're talking about China. human rights. We're talking you, about China. Even we're the, not saying even that other the Western countries, countries don't have problems. Has even the Western country, they have problem about human I'm rights. I'm not saying we don't, yeah. but we're talking about China. Every country Please don't has try and divert it yeah. to talking about other countries. We're talking about Every China. Every country You're has part its of own China. problem. And You're part of yeah. China. Yeah, certainly. Uh, we are now at, we are trying to uh, improve our community every day, just like other countries. The latest report by the Hong Kong Journalists Association mm. says that as Hong Kong has become more polarized between pro-Beijing and pro-democracy factions, its media, Hong Kong media, have experienced growing interference by the Chinese authorities. You said earlier you have free speech in Hong Kong. They're saying, and they know what they're talking about because they're in charge of the journalists here. They have their members in all the media. They're saying they're getting increased interference by the Chinese authorities. One of you is not... I, I can this. say the mass media in Hong Kong, they are quite independent. And I, I don't think they will be intimidated to avoid doing something in Hong Kong. According to Reporters Without Borders, China's... But you can see from the mass media in Hong Kong, uh, you, uh, there are many, many opinions, even against the Hong Kong government, against the central government. They are still in Hong Kong. That is the real situation. So Hong Kong, is, Hong, Kong, yeah. Hong Kong in the World Press Freedom Index has gone from 54th place to 73rd over the last five years. You proud of that? Uh, at, the it's reality falling. is that uh, the mass media in Hong Kong is still quite independent and they will not be intimidated by, by any uh, oppression from the Hong Kong administration or the central government. That is the reality that I see in Hong Kong today. Well, they say they are being intimidated. They're saying they're being threatened. They're saying that journalists are being encouraged to self-censor. And you're saying, what, that they just don't know what but they're talking you, about? You can see from the newspaper every day, there's still much criticism. It's still allowed in Hong Kong. In 2016, you, mm. said that, mm. uh, you, you said you were keen to push Chinese subjects in secondary schools, but especially history. Mm. And you said the situation was urgent and it was necessary to make Chinese history compulsory as every student should be clear about the nation's history. Do you think that Hong Kong's children are going to be clear about Chinese history if they get the same highly censored version of history that exists on the mainland? Um, when I promote the Chinese history in secondary school, uh, I just put forward the direction in the secondary school. When you are, talk, are talking about curriculum in the schools, uh, we, we leave it to the, uh, uh, to the education professional. We don't interfere with the syllabus or the curriculum. And all these things... You comment uh, on it, because Carrie Lam has commented mm. quite a bit on, on uh, how the handover was seen 20, 20 years ago, 21 years ago. She's commented quite a bit. So you know, you're not when we are talking, divorced from this when subject. We are talking about the Chinese history in the secondary school. We only talk about... Uh, we are not talking about the sensitive things uh, in the last decade. That is, if something uh, political in nature, then especially during the last 10 years, we still not yet have conclusion about that. Certainly, it's not in the syllabus of the Chinese history. But as I said before, we would, would not interfere with the syllabus and the curriculum. We had we, Zhang Zemin. We, we had Hong Zhang Kong Zemin now. from the central mm. government's mm. liaison office mm. in Hong Kong. He said, 
he wants people to dwell on not on the unfortunate historical events, but on China's successes. He said it's time to change biases against the Communist Party and the Chinese government and objectively and mm. comprehensively learn about the motherland and its constitutional system. But when so we he are, wants history no. taught about the good things that happened but to China. When we are talking about the syllabus and curriculum in the schools, actually it's designed that by a professional committee which is composed of education professional only. There are no politicians in this committee. Tell me this, Mr. Chung. Do you think mm. that Hong Kong children in the next 10 years are going to learn about what happened in the Cultural Revolution, the 1.7 million people who are killed? Are they going to learn about the massacres that took place in Beijing in 1989? Are they going to learn about we that in their history books? I would because say, they don't yeah. in mainland China, we will do they? They to, don't. to the hands of the education professionals. Oh, so you wash we, your hands. You couldn't care no, less, could as you? As a politician, you couldn't I care less. As a politician, you're avoiding the, the subject. Uh, education professional. That you, is the matter of uh, education. As a politician, we, we should not interfere with that. You're washing your hands of it, but the fact is mm. they're going to be taught history with big holes in it. They're going to be taught history that is a PR presentation of how well China has done over the last hundred years I and don't before. You, you must trust the teachers in Hong Kong. And the education board that tells them what to do? Really? And the educational board, actually, as I said, the committee is composed of education professional only. Yeah, there's, with there's China no telling them exactly there. where their loyalties lie for Unless the future. Unless you have the evidence, otherwise I don't think it's a fair comment about that. All right. Aris Chung, thank you very much for thank being you. on Conflict Zone. Thank you.